Now, Lifetime, they have the movie The Kidnapping of Lisa McVeigh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, some people, when you try to tell them something was going on, right? They act like they don't even want to believe you. Mm -hmm. Well, in this story, which is based off of a real-life kidnapping, a 17-year-old girl had to use reverse psychology to get her kidnappers to set her free. But when she returns home, the only person who seems to believe her story is a veteran detective, right? And that's kind of the problem most people dealing with issues like this has to face, too, right? But like I said, I don't know. Now, you could make good laws, but you could also make messed up laws that don't apply or don't really make sense. Like I told you about where it's talking about raping a woman. Now, if the Romans betrothed, right? Again, this is where we get into something a little fishy, though. Right. All right. <laughs> and she cries out. I know say, in the field or in the city, right, you can then stone only the men. Uh -huh. Now, if they're both caught, right, and she didn't cry out, you're to stone them both, which is what I'm pointing about, out about with the woman caught in the act of adultery, right? No matter whose wife she is, okay, <laughs> Jesus is doing two things to Moses' law. One, he's forgiving her the sin of of adultery, which is usually punished by stoning. Right. right. Second of all, mm -hmm. no matter who the woman's wife was, right, you're also to bring her husband, the man, or the man she committed adultery with, and her husband, if it's not Jesus himself, by the way, <laughs> and he's to pick up the first stone, the stone, right? You understand? If she's not Jesus' wife, well, they're supposed to get the husband of the woman <laughs> and the man she had sex with. Right. And both men are to debate, find out what happened. Right. Now, if they're found guilty of adultery, which is sex with another man's wife who is legally her husband, right? Then you're to stone both parties, <laughs> the male and the female who committed the adultery. <laughs> That's also in the law of Moses. And, uh, so not only if they only brought the woman, and she if she wasn't Jesus' wife, right, which is kind of silly there, if she's not, right, would they have to bring the man with her to be stoned with her? if they caught her with him committing fornication, which is what you call the law is the law of adultery with the woman cheating on her husband outside their marriage, right? The act is called fornication, as Jesus pointed it out in Matthew 19 when talking about divorcing your wife for any cause, right? And basically saying if she commits fornication, you can leave a divorce her. But you're like, well, wait a minute. Didn't he say you commit fornication if you have sex with a woman? And even if you divorce her and she marries another man? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he also met the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah talks of seven women who take hold of one man to take away their reproach. And if he does so, they will eat their own bread and wear their own apparel. Mm -hmm. Which kind of means like they'll take care of it, the child themselves. It kind of sounds like a single mother type thing. <laughs> In the Old Testament, by the way. <laughs> but... Anyway, these women are saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel 
Only let us be called by thy name to take our way, our reproach. And again, several women in the Bible were having difficulty having children. Rachel is one. Mm -hmm. Hannah is one. Mm -hmm. Samson's mother is one. <laughs> and Elizabeth. Zechariah's wife is one. <laughs> and it calls the word used for a woman who was bearing a reproach. Amen. Now, mm -hmm. why do you think the Gnostics, though, are talking about Jesus kissing Mary on the often? <laughs> Face, mouth, well, mm -hmm. in early Judaism around the first century, for one, the only one you can kiss <laughs> anywhere on her body, mouth, hand, face, anything, often, <laughs> Is your wife. Is your wife. <laughs> you can't kiss a woman who's not your wife either. Technically, I don't know, right? It all depends, right? You know, back then it was more the female who wasn't to commit adultery against the male too, right? If you know what I mean. <laughs> it more favored the male too unless y'all divorced beforehand, right? Before the sex, right? Mm -hmm. Occurred with the other person. <laughs> now, if you divorce like anything else, you could move on and remarry. But another weird thing, as Moses said, though, you can't go back to your ex wife either and reconcile to her. Mm -hmm. For instance, the last woman I was with was Molly Z, that I know for sure, right? Right. So, Molly is still my last ex-wife, right? I have not met a current wife, nor do I just try to cheat on a woman if she becomes my wife sexually or we legally marry either way. Now, when I was growing up, though, a lot of people were having premarital sex, and a lot of the men were faking the women out by just telling them they loved them, <laughs> And then would abandon them when they would get pregnant. And, uh, well, see, that was another thing I was trying not to do with Sheena. Right. See, I thought she wanted the sex. Right? Oral and full. Right? But she didn't say she didn't. And, uh, and see, my church has obviously shown me a lot of stuff her church might not have shown her. I don't know. Okay. See, another reason I sent her Pastor Davis's Bible studies is to compare notes, right? Well, this is what my church Pentecostal was teaching me. You know, what's your church teaching you? That's what I'm asking her there. Because mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Now, I also stumbled upon a verse in the Old Testament that says, if a man entice a woman and lay with her, which means sex, before marriage, he shall surely endow her or ask her hand of her father in marriage. See, the Bible in the Old Testament lets you do it premaritally if you ask for her hand in marriage, like your good man would. And if you are betrothed, you're not to touch the girl until you're legally married, too. Right. You could do it either way, but the thing is, by the time Rome comes around, that's 1,500 years after Moses wrote the law anyway. That's your problem, too. Now, this is what Jesus is talking about, though, when he talks to them about honoring your father and mother. Mm-hmm. But then they started doing something similar to our nursing homes today, right? Saying it is a gift, right? And, you know, paying money for someone else to take care of their parents when it was their job, right? 
Well, that was something they weren't supposed to do according to Moses' law either. And Jesus was pointing it out that your traditions are not from Moses' law either. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing, like I said, is if the girl's not betrothed like me and Tina, she wasn't engaged, I wasn't engaged. So I asked her to marry me after the sex to make sure I didn't get her pregnant. <laughs> But that's when she quit writing me when I started talking about all that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with her mind. <laughs> I would then have to guess what the hell was wrong. Because <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm not a mind reader, nor is Jesus. But he might can read your body language. But if you were showing me the same body language you would show Jesus, he would think you wanted to make love to him too. <laughs> Especially if you didn't tell him you were waiting for marriage <laughs> before the day of. <laughs> and the date continued too after the little encounter in the park. <laughs> now, a man can also do a quickie or a longie. He <laughs> comes to sex too, right? Three of the women I was with was kind of a quickie. Mm -hmm. The first girl from Shay's party, Sheena and Molly C. The rest were about five minutes or more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 